everyone so now let's start the female reproductive system the female reproductive system is again located in the pelvic region okay located in the pelvic region same as the male uh, reproductive system the female reproductive system consists of the following parts first the ovaries these are the primary female sex organs second is the oviduct also known as the fallopian tube third is the uterus fourth cervix and fifth is the vagina and last part external genitalia vagina doesn't come under external genitalia okay these are the female accessory duct vagina comes under female accessory duct okay so these are the following parts of the female reproductive system and the female reproductive system is located in the pelvic region so now let's start with the first part that is the ovaries before starting ovaries there is one more important part that is the mammary gland mammary glands what are these mammary glands these are the functional and structural units of the female reproductive system so mammary glands are structural and functional units of the female reproductive system now what are the function of these mammary glands they help in ovulation they help in fertilization they help in pregnancy birth and child care so these are the following functions of the mammary glands the mammary glands are the structural and functional units of the female reproductive system now let's start the ovaries ovaries they are the primary female sex organs primary female sex organs which helps in the process of formation of ovum okay now primary after this point comes helps in the secret and synthesis of the steroid hormones steroid hormones also known as ovarian hormones okay steroid hormones also known as the ovarian hormones now steroid hormones uh, example if you see estrogen and progesterone these are the two examples of the steroid hormones after this point comes the ovaries are attached to the pelvic wall these ovaries are attached to the pelvic wall with the help of ligaments with the help of ligaments okay so ovaries are attached to the pelvic wall with the help of ligaments after this point comes that 2 to 4 cm in length ovaries are 2 to 4 cm in length and ovaries uh, content the content of ovary is known as the ovarian stroma okay so the content of ovary if we see i'm rubbing this part the content of ovary content is known as the ovarian stroma there is a three uh, thin outer layer covering this ovarian stroma and this ovarian stroma has two parts this peripheral cortex 
peripheral cortex and inner medulla so the content of ovary is known as the ovarian stroma ovarian stroma has two parts peripheral cortex and inner medulla next part is the ovary duct next part is ovary duct ovary duct is also known as the fallopian tube fallopian tube it has total three parts fallopian tube has three parts one two and three first part is known as the infundibulum infundibulum second part is ampulla and third part is isthmus now this infundibulum is closer to ovary and has finger like structure which is known as fimbri fimbri these are the finger like structure and this finger like structure what is the uh, what is the function of this finger like structure collection of ovum now this ampulla this ampulla is the wider part okay this ampulla is the wider part and next to infundibulum isthmus what it consists of it consists of a narrow lumen isthmus consists of a narrow lumen okay this fallopian tube extends from ovary to the uterus okay now next part is the uterus uterus also known as the ovum which is singular okay and if it is asked about its shape we will say that it is inverted pear shaped okay so this uterus is inverted pear shaped the main point of uterus is that uterus remember this flow chart uterus opens into the vagina through a narrow cervix okay uterus opens into the vagina through a narrow cervix this narrow cervix has a cavity what is this cavity called as it is called as the cervical canal okay so this cavity is is called the cervical canal now this vagina plus this cervical canal together forms the birth canal so uterus opens into vagina through a narrow cervix this narrow cervix has a cavity which is known as the cervical canal this vagina plus the cervical canal together forms the birth canal through which parturition occurs okay now next part about uterus only that it has three layers okay uterus has three layers what are these three layers first layer is the perimetrium okay so these layers are from outer to inner okay first layer perimetrium second myometrium this is the second and third is the endometrium
perimetrium helps in the protection myometrium this myometrium has smooth muscles which helps in the contraction process okay and this endometrium it is also known as the glandular layer which undergoes changes during menstrual cycle okay so the glandular layer endometrium it undergoes changes during the menstrual cycle this was the whole part of the uterus now let's come to the external genitalia external genitalia has five parts total okay first is the mons pubis what is this mons pubis it has a layer of fatty tissues and pubic hair first is the mons pubis second is labia majora this labia majora extends down from the mons pubis this will be mons okay not mons pubis okay it will be mons pubis labia majora extends from mons pubis and cover the vaginal opening okay so mons pubis first then labia majora third comes labia minora these are what are labia minora these are tissues under the labia majora so layer of tissues under labia majora okay now fourth part what will be the fourth part fourth part is the hymen hymen helps in the partial opening of vagina okay this helps in the vaginal opening covering and this helps in the partial opening of vagina okay hymen fifth part is the clitoris what is the function of clitoris or what is clitoris it is a finger like structure structure which is present at the upper junction of labia minora okay so these are the five parts of the external genitalia first is the mons pubis which is a layer of fatty tissues and pubic hair then comes labia majora then labia minora then hymen and finally is the clitoris okay now let's come to the mammary glands mammary glands through a flow chart i will make you understand mammary glands consist of first two parts glandular tissues and 
वेरिएबल अमाउंट ऑफ फैट These are the two parts. First is the glandular tissues and variable amount of fat. Glandular tissues consist of fifteen to twenty mammary lobes. This fifteen to twenty mammary lobes now has cluster of cells, which is called as the alveoli. This cluster of cells secret milk. This secret, uh, this milk is then stored at the lumen of alveoli. Okay. This uh, this milk is then stored at the Lumen of alveoli. Now this alveolus then uh, then opens into the mammary tubules. Several mammary tubules, like several mammary lobes, cluster of cells, alveoli. Then several mammary lobe uh, tubules form the mammary. duct okay then several mammary duct form the mammary ampulla okay several mammary tubules form the mammary duct and the several mammary duct then form the mammary ampulla then finally milk is secret uh, sucked through the lactiferous duct okay so finally milk is secreted to uh, uh, suck through the lactiferous duct so and a short uh, term you can remember here short form l t d l so l for lobes then t for tubules then d for duct and then a for ampulla so mammary lobes then alveoli then mammary tubules then mammary duct several mammary duct from the mammary ampulla and finally through lactiferous duct the milk is sucked out so this was the whole female reproductive system thank you